create art and uh, don't try and sit on them and, and have them make what your vision is. This is his vision. And uh, so this is, uh, you know, it's very fun that, to have this for Skills Week. I'm glad I wasn't here when it was brought in earlier. Um, you know, uh, I understand everybody still has their, their toes and knees and other parts intact uh, from bringing this thing in. Um, but I, I'm really thrilled to have this, this new art edition uh, here. You know, uh, one, of, one of my favorite things hearing uh, in the past and brewing, Fritz Maytag is sort of the founder of the craft beer movement in uh, the United States. Fritz always said, people want to believe that their beer comes from a beautiful place. And I think anybody that comes in here can see that this is, uh, you know, a beautiful brew house and uh, we're going to make it a little bit more beautiful, a little bit more memorable this afternoon. Hi, my name is Salem Barker. I do anything uh, that makes money that I can enjoy. Well, um, most of my contacts are made doing shows, just doing simple web activity. Social networking isn't going to get that word out there, so just physically packing my stuff up in the van, heading off to the big cities, setting up, doing the outdoor art fairs. I do the indoor art shows too, like at convention centers and whatnot. So I ended up meeting um, uh, a real lover of wood and wood art um, who actually owns a microbrewery. And um, he expressed to me that uh, he liked my sculptures and we talked for a while and he, then in the end he hands me his business card and it actually was a piece of wood. A very finely plain piece of wood with a laser etched image, wood burned image. And I thought, man, you beat me to the coolest card I've ever seen. Coffee, oil, saw gasoline. I almost cut my finger off. So I, I looked and I saw the bone and I was like, no! And I held it up like this, squeezed it tight and it ran over to the super glue, just drooled it in there and held it shut. Went back to work. He, uh, his, his secretary responded and, and she, she basically said, um, we're gonna, Larry told me to give you the, the best, most in-depth tour I've ever given. So I'm to absorb this whole place, the whole process, the feel of the factory, to see the space where it would go, just take it all in. That way I can put my whole heart and my mind into this piece. And in the four hour ride home as it sat on my trailer and I hauled this thing back home, the concept came right to me. Like I just knew what I was, go what I was gonna make here. So uh, I can, I, right now I can see the finished product. The details are all going to evolve as I move into it, but I can hardly wait to make some chips. It's hard when you begin with a, uh, first off with a rough piece because you can might get an image of what's in there, but as you walk around, it's easy to get lost. Oh, I can't see the reverse side now. So it's good to put some lines on it, and then when I go make my circle around it, I can come back to 12 o'clock or whatever, and I know where kind of home base is. And then the trick also is to make it non-frontal. Some sculpture, they hang on the wall, it doesn't matter. But with this, it's going to be perfect on all sides. Um, I've just kind of developed my own methods and my own ideas. And then later, I meet other wood sculptors, and ironically, they're using the same kind of tools. So we've arrived at the same point. It never crossed my mind. I had the imagination as a kid because people always thought I was good at drawing and painting. So I thought, I could be an artist. It wasn't uh, until, I mean, crudely enough, it was actually these guys at the Boone County Fair with chainsaws making bears and eagles and I'm completely disinterested in those forms but seeing how they can just race into a solid piece of wood like that with power tools that are fun to use I mean boys like chainsaws things that are loud it was uh, it was July 4th week or weekend uh, 2003 and uh, the big microburst came through Rockford and made national news It knocked down all our biggest trees and I was off work from a motorcycle injury, hobbling around on crutches, waiting for cadaver parts to show up. I was clearing out a, a, a maple tree that had fallen, and I stood up a four and a half foot tall piece of maple and, uh, and just felt artistic and just went right into it. 
with a cheap plastic 12 inch electric craftsman chainsaw where you got to pump for the oiler and stuff and and I, I roughed this thing out in short time. Yeah, I discovered that I could I could pull these shapes out in my imagination and all of a sudden, man, it just, the only time I was happy was when I was sculpting. So Friday nights, my friends are calling, they're all out at the bar and I do like that too, but sometimes I'm just having, I'm just totally at peace in my own little world, playing music that I want to listen to, got my you know headphones on and loud power tools and, and then, all of a sudden, when I was able to start selling these, changed, it changed everything. I am going to aim to have this done uh, by early December, so hopefully a couple months. Gotta feel this thing. Are you in there? You gotta talk to it and love it and listen. All right, so yeah, when I look at a sculpture, I, I step back and at first I, I look at the outside silhouette. If I can't force the masses to be proportioned where they are, no matter how good your detail is, it will always suck as a sculpture. So we've got good movement here, kind of a rhythm in, out, in, out, like waves, whatever it takes, kind of musical. But this side is very stoic and flat, cylindrical, column-like. So I'm gonna come in heavy here. So we got, then they don't do the same thing. That's bad. You know, it's okay on a woman, some symmetry, whatever, but not on a sculpture. So my intent with sculpture is that I take a once living organism and I'm attempting to resurrect it into something that looks like it's alive again. So I want it to be very rhythmic and energetic. I want it to look as though it grew this way. So even though it came from a single solid piece, the wandering lines that come together and here's their charm. Wow. Yeah, I haven't even thought of a name. It's just a... Uh, Actually, I didn't even think of naming it. Would you like a name for it? I could come up with a pretty wild one, I'm sure. But it's, uh, the, the piece is telling people, such a story. It's, people will ask. They will ask. And what's, what do you call this thing? If you don't name it, somebody will. And you'd probably prefer to name it yourself. I agree. I'm gonna think about that. Cool. Uh, Larry Bell, president and founder, Bell's Brewery Incorporated, formerly known as Kalamazoo Brewing Company. I think uh, I met Salem at uh, the Gold Coast Art Fair, which isn't in the Gold Coast, it's down in Grant Park. Um, I was really drawn to his pieces and my wife kept, was like, no, really? And especially because he was showing uh, what I call industrial pieces. Um, Michigan beat gears and Michigan being auto, it's like, wow, this guy, some of it was carved from a single piece and where you go, it's like, how the hell do you do that? It kind of you know, blows your mind, and uh, it, it was interesting. And this, this wood is really hard. American elm is very dense. So, there were these two American elms in the yard that were doing just fine, and in the neighbor's yard there was an American elm. And that house got sold, and the new owner came in and like totally, like brought in heavy equipment and totally ripped out the backyard and I think that's what brought the disease in. Um, so his tree went, and you know, if they're touching roots, which those trees are so big, they are. Um, so then the one tree went, and I had it cut down, and I had my buddy make it into the roll top desk. I could see that the big one was going, and so it's like, uh, let's get it cut down before it really dies, because then the wood is still gonna be, be good, because I, I think it would go pretty, pretty fast. Um, so the the tree company came. The guy looks at me and says, "I think there's about a thousand board foot in this tree, and there's an internal battle going on in here whether to do it or not." And, um, That's with making the boards. No, with with making the art. 
Oh. You know, in the end of the battle, the art side won. And um, uh, because really, when do you ever see a tree like that anymore? Uh, American Elm. And uh, a couple weeks ago, I was out and I took a look and I took the time and counted rings. So the house will be 80 years old next year. So basically the tree was, was there from the start of the house. Uh, ruined two chainsaw, uh, two uh, saw chains. Finding a piece of metal in the tree. Actually broke drive sprocket on my little Makita high speed carving saw, so that was unfortunate. By the time I rigged up something else, got another bar going, stuck it in there, threw, threw sparks and ka chunk, ka chunk, ka chunk, tore up, it, tore up the blade. And uh, then I look up in there and see shiny metal going horizontal. Two horizontal steel rods look like about three eighths of an inch. Probably somebody drove a couple really heavy nails. Got it. Yeah, you can get what's uh, they call it slingback, where the chain breaks, cuts your hand, cuts your leg, cuts whatever, and it's just it's, it can be nasty. So, and then you get to pick the thing out of there. Well, you know they say subtractive sculpting or reduction sculpting or I think uh, Henry Moore called it truth to form. Uh, it's like I can feel what it wants to be. And you know, the famous Michelangelo saying, I just removed everything that didn't belong to it. It really does feel that way. So, fascinating. What I like about wood, it's much softer than say working with stone. The debris is easier to control. And, uh, but I, it's, what fascinates me is that this is a once living organism. And this, so it's a sort of a, a resurrection process, and uh, you've got a sculpture that in essence grew from a seed, a tiny seed, grew this massive colossal kind of ornament of our landscape, and it comes down from death, old age, storms, disease, whatever, and you know it's going to firewood. Nobody was had this thing slated for high-end furniture, and uh, but somebody had a vision and a dream to say, let's see some artwork out of this, and it's exciting to be able to execute that. Um, so, I started home brewing in 1980. I moved into a house with three other guys. We all liked beer, and uh, I was working at a bakery, yeast and grains. You know, and I bought a homebrew kit and started making beer in the basement. And uh, the hobby started getting out of control, and um, I was I was selling beer out of the basement to keep my hobby going. And uh, one night, Saturday night, about 10 o'clock, there's a knock on the door, and I thought, oh, shit, this is the Revenuers. And I thought about jumping out the, the basement window. It's like, no, if it's the Revenuers, better to open the door. And it was my buddies, the Bluegrass Band. Hey, Larry, we're going on the road. We need a case of that beer. And it scared the shit out of me, though. And the next day, I wrote to the federal government. I knew, I, you know, I had a fish or cut bait, and I wrote to the government and said, what do I got to do to open a brewery? And uh, I'd watched like what Sierra Nevada, I knew about them, and there was a small brewery over in Chelsea, Michigan that I, you know, that had just opened, I was watching them. And uh, so I uh, decided to go, go ahead with the thing and try and raise some money. And basically when we opened, we were a, a legalized home brewery. I had a 15 gallon soup pot and uh, a double, double ring uh, stove and some plastic garbage pails. Um, you know, there's <laughs> countless home brewers who have better equipment now than what I had to start commercially. But there wasn't, you know, there wasn't anything out there uh, uh, at that time, and I didn't have very much money. So, uh, you know, we just kind of started off on a wing and a prayer and uh, washing bottles, washing and filling bottles by hand, labeling them by hand, and all that stuff. You've come a long way. Yeah, it's been, you know, I opened the homebrew store in 1983, so, you know, that part of the business is 30 years old this year. And brewery's 28. Brewer's talking barrels. Quantity. Barrels. Quantity, so, uh, one U.S. barrel equals 31 gallons. So this year we'll do about 250,000 barrels. You know, you and I look at this place and go, God, this is huge. And then you realize how small we are out there and what the consum in the market, what the consumption is. I mean, I look at the bottom of the line, it's like, God, that's a lot of beer. 
at when it's running and then you go, oh, now we're one, one tenth of one percent of the market in the United States. Fritz Maytag, who was on the Anchor Brewing, sort of the father of craft brewing in America, you know, I said, you know, people, people want to know that their beer is made in a beautiful place. And, uh, yeah. You know, when you come here, then you see all that wood. You know, we're adding some things. So if people come through here, yeah, it does come from a beautiful place. We got some neat stuff. You know, yeah. I think people are gonna think it's awesome. You know, and, you know, we, this company and myself, we're big supporters of the arts, uh, uh, locally, both visual and you know, music and uh, whatnot. So uh, I, I think it'd be huge. And I, you guys want to do an unveiling? <laughs> so it's exciting. And uh, at this point, I'd like to introduce uh, the artist, Salem Barker. Thank you very much. I, I'm really proud to have a, have a piece of sculpture here in this brewery. And uh, it looks like, well, maybe it's the only piece of sculpture here, but depending on who you ask, this room might be full of sculptures because brewing is truly an art as well as sculpting. And so I really put my heart and mind into this piece, and I found a common thread between uh, sculpting in wood and brewing beer, and that's that all of these elements are coming from seed, and they are also only made for our enjoyment. It's not, we don't need beer, we don't need art. They, they, they enliven us, and they raise our spirits and our minds, and, and so they're a passion and they're an art. And uh, as, as Larry says, some artists work in paint and stone, others in barley and hops. And while well, a tree itself comes ultimately from a seed. This guy wants to be a part of it too. Say hi, Isaiah. He's my son. I'm waiting to have another one coming soon. Yeah, that's awesome. So, um, well, I'd like to also uh, explain this thing to you after you see it. And so now I present to you From Seed to the Senses. Good, good sculpture to me, and I'm not studied, I just, I'm just a worker, and somebody's really put my passion into what I do. Good sculpture is non-frontal, it, it, is, it is viewable on all sides, and this sculpture tells a story. And what you're looking at here, and you all get a chance to, to walk around it and, and, and explore this, and understand it, 
Um, you have three main legs moving upwards from the outside, and they all, they all come upwards towards the top and they, they twist into a cyclone. And then from there, they are turning into two fountainheads which are emitting the product, beer. Well, the first leg here is, on the left, barley and hops, the core materials. The second figure, and Larry does like my, my gear formations, um, my contemporary forms of uh, industry, and uh, I've, I've harmonized um, a gear-like form to represent the um, um, immense uh, technical um, facets we have here. So then the third one is our symbols of Larry's uh, popular brews. Um, some classic and one, many of the current ones, and that represents the final seasonings, the final touch that goes into um, producing those uh, popular flavors that Larry's art is known for. So, here we have it, from seed to the senses. As I designed the sculpture, I chose the lines that are in it. I just so happened to free up one half of this hook, the side that was once captured. And now the side that was once free is now captured. And so I left it there. And uh, after all, I did pay immensely for it. Probably a couple hundred dollars worth of chainsaw tools, parts. So I bro uh, broke, broke two chains and, uh, and shattered a drive sprocket and had to pay for expedited shipping because I don't sit around. I keep working. So uh, you'll find that uh, just inside the right um, side um, beer flowing movement. Does it, does it want to kind of tell you what to do with it or, I mean, did it fight you? No, I'm a control freak. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, this, here's, okay, so uh, that's a joke. Um, that's my wife. That's a joke. So I'm driving uh, home she's after... She's laughing. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she is. So um, Kate Wonderful Kate here gave me the most uh, in-depth tour she'd said she'd ever given, and then we went down and had had some beers, and I already had this, it was a tree, <clears throat> on my trailer, and within an hour of driving home, because I told Larry, all I need to do is see the tree, I need to see the place, when I capture that, when I, when, I, when, I, when I feel what belongs there, it will come to me, and it did, within an hour, this exact thing was in my mind on the drive home, within a, before I even left Michigan, headed back to Northern Illinois. So, um, I never sketched it, Never drew it out, it just, it worked, just like I wanted. Awesome, well let's let everybody take a look around then. All right, thank you, sir. sculpture was actually exciting enough that when I started it, it was self-motivating and I didn't put the tools down until it was done. That's, uh, I've only done small pieces like that that can be finished you know, in a couple of weeks. This thing, taking two, two and a half months, I really haven't looked at the calendar, but since the last week in September, working 12 and 15 hour days, I never stopped until it was done. So are you going to have, uh, you're going to have, uh, anxiety? Now they separation can, anxiety. Separation anxiety. <laughs> that happens. That happens. Yeah. It's this huge journey. You, you get to this pinnacle, and then it's all over, and it's gone. But um, you know, a friend of mine, another artist friend of mine, said, "Fall in love with the process, not the finished piece, so that uh, it's quick to begin another one, and you don't have a heartbreak." But um, since we do it for a living, you know, it's uh, it's just part of the game. So, but yeah, I think my my shop is going to look really empty now because of the intricacy, because you have all the different forms coming up, yeah. I think you can probably, uh, with some creative lighting, make some interesting shadows uh, exactly. in, in there as well. If, if, you, cross, if you cross light it yeah. just across its face, it, it will cast amazing shadows. Every, every leaf on the, in the hops buds is going to you know, really stand out because mm -hmm. the, the small, small shadows they cast if you bring the light in from the upper left. And so that, that's how I sculpt it. I always put two crossing each other and uh, and I study and I make I choose my lines very carefully sometimes it takes sometimes longer to decide upon cutting a line than it does just to cut it um, but um, yeah who knows maybe it is another time I find a, a fun trick
That's my first expedition scout. And you know what people do when they go somewhere? Especially they take a picture of the expedition. 